It's Swinging London in the 1960s, and director Michelangelo Antonioni releases his first entirely English language film, Blow Up. Referring to work in his native Italian language, the other two films will follow will be Zabriskie Point and The Passenger. With other movies like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, The Sand Pebbles, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf also being released in 1966, it was inevitable that the stringent reign of the production code was growing weaker and weaker, simply because there was entertainment to be found in what it forbade. Truth is stranger than fiction. Reality is more frightening than fantasy. These sort of mentalities made viewers want the cinema to be more daring, and they certainly proved this, as the film made over 11 times its budget at the box office. Time writer Richard Corliss believes this helped liberate Hollywood from its puritanical purience. It's inspired by the story Las Babas del Diablo, or The Devil's Jewel, which appears in the compilation Las Armas Secretas, or The Secret Weapons, written by Julio Cortazar in 1959. The film starts downtown with what looks like Tim Burton's remake of the Keystone Cops, who certainly stand out like sore thumbs from the civil people heading to and from their jobs. One of them is our star, who is based off of English photographer David Bailey, and played by David Hemmings, confusingly enough. Thomas, as he's called here, is a fashion model photographer. Hi! No chewing gum, get rid of it. Not on my floor. It's probably not best to mention he's one of the more polite British folk. He often tires of his work and just goes off to do stuff. Now, there's a lot of scenes that follow him around that just seem to go nowhere and serve no purpose. But in the end, that's how part of the plight of an artist sort of goes. Their inspiration doesn't always follow the same schedule as you would expect a train. Like this scene, where he goes to an antique store and he seems interested in the old photographs they have. Okay, makes sense. So he eventually decides to pitch in and buy a propeller? Well, you'll never know what you need during a photo shoot, so why the heck not? One of the places he goes to unwind while taking photographs is Marion Park. First you stick your bag, put it in the bag, bump, bump. Then you bend your back, put it in the sack, bump, bump. That's the way it's done. It's a lot of fun, bump, bump. Cutting capers, putting papers in the bag. One sight that catches his eye is a man and a woman running off together. Naturally, when the woman spots Thomas, she's infuriated by his eavesdropping. This is the leading lady, Jane, played by Vanessa Redgrave. This is a public place. Everyone has the right to be left in peace. My lawyers are going to have a field day with this. Entrapment, jurisdictional conflict. Well, maybe we'll just leave the courts out of this one. For whatever reason, she really wants the photos he took, and will go to seemingly strange lengths to get them. He eventually does take the time to develop them, and here we see that the phrase blow up refers to the enlarging process, rather than some other expected variant. However, he can't help but feel something peculiar about the photographs. Upon further inspection, it looks as if he involuntarily witnessed or prevented a murder. If so, who is the culprit, and how and when did the events carry out? It's hard to say exactly what happened in reality. The film leaves it rather ambiguous and there's no direct addressing of who the hero is or who the villain is, or if there are any of either at all. I think that's why the movie has a lot of quiet moments and scenes where no plot really advances. It provides the viewers a chance to digest and interpret the events without having to physically pause the movie. Other movies with a lot of action may make you play back a scene frame by frame, and that becomes more of a forensics investigation than a movie screening. Fittingly enough, Blow Up may make you feel like a detective yourself, so I'm certainly glad I watched it and gave this experiment a shot of my own.